Welcome to Brew Cheese, where we brew up the finest of cheese. I'm Micah, and thanks for tuning in. If you're new to our channel, we brew up Commander decks on a budget. Formerly, that budget was $25, but given that this did not accurately reflect hidden costs such as shipping or needing to compromise on price to order from fewer vendors, we've increased this to $50. We'll also be providing a more summarized view of each card in the deck. If you like or dislike any of these changes, be sure to let us know in the comments. Daxos holds a special place in my heart. One of my first commander decks was Daxos of Melitus, built before I really knew what I was doing. Eventually, I bought the Daxos the Returned deck from Commander 2015. This deck set the roots for two things, my love of Orzov and for enchantment-based decks, both of which continue to this day. Theros Beyond Death brings us Daxos, blessed by the sun. And I just gotta say, Look on the mask of my boy. Although he's not quite as powerful in this incarnation as he once was, this version, which I'm calling Soul Mister, is still an interesting build around. He gives us life whenever one of our creatures enters the battlefield or dies, and also has a toughness equal to our devotion to white. So what is our strategy with Daxos? We're including other things that give us instances of life gain when we do things like have creatures enter or attack. We're going to employ a lot of token production to take full advantage of Daxos and our suite of soul sisters. We're going to win via either enhancing those tokens with anthem effects or by weaponizing that life gain. In order to play out our cards as quickly as we can, we'll need to provide some measure of ramp. First up, we have Mindstone, which produces a colorless, or we can pay one tap and sack it to draw a card. Next up is Hedron Archive and Dreamstone Hedron, both of which are double and triple the cost and effects of Mindstone, producing two and three colorless, respectively, or drawing two or three cards at the cost of two or three mana, tapping and sacrificing. Commander Sphere produces just white, but we can also sacrifice it at any time to draw a card. All of these artifacts are handy for providing a bit of card draw if we no longer need the mana. Marble Diamond enters tapped and taps for white. Goldmere is also going to provide white for us along with a body to help trigger some of our life gain. Heraldic Banner lets us choose a color and give all of our creatures that are that color plus one plus O oh, and it taps for that color. Paradise Plume also lets us choose a color and tap it for that, but we also get a life any time any player casts a spell of that color. Astral Cornucopia is triple X in cost and enters with X charge counters, and then taps for X mana of any color. Everflowing Chalice enters with a charge counter on it for each two mana we can pay into it, and then taps for a colorless for each of those charge counters. Our card draw package kicks off with Dawn of Hope. An enchantment that lets us pay 2 whenever we gain life to draw a card. With sufficient mana, we should have plenty of life gain triggers in a turn and can draw a ton of cards. We can also help fuel our strategy by paying 3 in a white to make a 1-1 lifelinking soldier. Well of Lost Dreams lets us pay X any time we gain life, up to the amount of life gained, and draw that many cards. Mentor of the Meek draws us a card any time a creature with power 2 or less enters our battlefield, so long as we can pay 2. Oracle's Vault lets us pay 2 and tap it to exile the top card of our library, and we have until end of turn to play that card. Once we've activated this ability 3 times, however, we can thereafter tap it to exile and play the top card without paying for it. Next up is Farsight Mask, an artifact that draws us a card every time we take damage from an opponent's source. There are plenty of strategies in Commander that seek to repeatedly damage opponents, or with our life total we may be a prime target for attacks, and so we can reap a huge amount of cards from this effect. Arcane Encyclopedia simply lets us pay 3 into it and tap it to draw a card. The Soul Mister isn't complete without the OG and some more accompaniment. Soul Warden and Soul's Attendant each give us life for each creature that enters the battlefield, no matter under whose control. A Johnny's Welcome is an enchantment that gives us a life every time a creature enters our own battlefield, as does Impassioned Orator. Suture Priest also gives us a life when a creature enters our battlefield, but also punishes our opponents with one life loss every time a creature enters their battlefield. 
Answered prayers also gives us a life with every one of our creatures entering, and when it does trigger, it becomes a 3-3 flying angel until end of turn. Anointer Priest gives us a life with every one of our tokens that enter, and can be embalmed to come back a second time. Healer of the Pride gives us two life with every creature that enters our battlefield. We can also benefit every time one of our creatures attacks. Linden, the Steadfast Queen, gives us a life every time one of our white creatures attacks, and also provides a solid three white boost to our devotion. Wingmate Rock, so long as it's part of the attacking force, gives us a life for each attacker. It also creates a second 3-4 flying token to help out our overall plan, so long as we've attacked that turn that we play it. Patron of the Kitsune gives us a life whenever anybody's creature attacks, as does Righteous Cause. These effects are great because they dampen the amount of life we'll lose and benefit us even if we're not the one being attacked. Finally, there's Angel of Vitality, which says that if we would gain life, we gain an additional life. Also, so long as we have 25 or more life, it gets plus 2 plus 2. Mostly, we're interested in the boost to our life gain as we're playing lots of individual small life gain triggers, so adding 1 to each of them is really going to add up. But what are we doing with all this life gain? Well, first up, we're running Felidar Sovereign, which on our upkeep wins us the game if we have 40 or more life. Then there's Phyrexian Processor, which has us pay any amount of life when it enters, and then can tap for 4 mana to create an XX token where that's the amount of life we paid. Crested Sun Mirror is an expensive piece for the deck, but nowhere near the cost it used to command. At the end of any player's turn, we make a 5-5 white horse creature token, so long as we gained life that turn. It also gives all of those horses indestructible. Sunbond is a creature enchantment that gives the creature a plus one plus one counter for each life we gain. Angelic Accord also helps our goal by giving us a 4-4 flying angel at the end of any turn in which we gained four or more life. Regna the Redeemer provides two 1-1 one, one white warrior creature tokens at the end of any turn in which we gained life. Next there's Storm Herd, which creates a 1-1 one, one white flying pegasus creature token for each point of life we have. Nomad's Assembly gives us a 1-1 one, one white core soldier creature token for each creature we control, and then it rebounds to get automatically cast at the beginning of our next upkeep, producing even more tokens. Legion's Landing creates a 1-1 one, one white vampire token with lifelink, and when if we attack with three or more creatures, flips into a Danto, the first fort, a land that taps for white, or to crank out another lifelinking vampire for two and a white. Twilight Drover gets a plus one plus one counter whenever a creature token leaves the battlefield, and for every two and a white encounter we remove from it, we create two 1-1 one, one flying spirits. Silverwing Squadron has power and toughness equal to the number of creatures we control. Coupled with flying and vigilance, this makes a great threat and a great blocker in the air. Every time it attacks, we create a number of 2-2 white knights with vigilance for each opponent we have. Geist Honored Monk also has power and toughness equal to our creature count and vigilance, and when it enters, it comes a 2-1-1 flying spirit friends. Leonin War Leader creates two 1-1 one, one lifelinking white cats every time it attacks, and those tokens come in tapped and attacking as well. Darien, King of Keldor, gives us a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token for each point of damage we're dealt. Finally, there's Oketra's Monument, which makes our white creatures one less to cast, and gives us a 1-1 one, one white warrior token whenever we do cast a creature spell. Since White's access to quality card draw pieces is more than a little limited, we're running White's other answers to card advantage with some powerful reanimation effects. Sun Titan returns a permanent with CMC 3 or less to our battlefield when it enters or every time it attacks. Bishop of Rebirth acts as a slightly watered down version, returning only creatures with CMC 3 or less and only when it attacks. Sigil of the New Dawn allows us to pay one in a white whenever one of our creatures dies, and if we do, we return it to our hand to cast again. We're also running a number of anthems and other enhancements to make our tokens another viable win strategy. First in that list is True Conviction, which will give all of our creatures double strike and lifelink. In this deck, that's a great combination as it means two separate instances of life gain per creature. Intangible Virtue gives all of our tokens plus one plus one in Vigilance, leaving them up to block again if need be. 
Path of Bravery gives all of our creatures plus one plus one, so long as we have more than our starting life total. Also, whenever our creatures attack, we gain life equal to the number of attacking creatures. Banalish Marshal gives all of our other creatures plus one plus one, and another three white to our devotion count. Honor of the Pure gives all of our white creatures a plus one plus one bonus. Spear of Heliod both provides a plus one plus one bump to our creatures and lets us destroy a creature that damaged us this turn by paying one and double white and tapping it. Not an anthem effect, but a nice payoff to the devotion that's boosting our commander's toughness, we're also running Gauntlets of Light, a creature enchantment that gives a plus two bump to toughness and lets the creature use its toughness for dealing damage. It also lets us pay two and a white to untap the enchanted creature. Hour of Reckoning. It destroys all non-token creatures, and we can convoke it out rather than pay that 7 mana cost. Martial Coup can be used for either a token production or as a board wipe, creating X white soldier creature tokens. If X is 5 or more, we destroy all other creatures. Dusk to Dawn destroys all creatures with power 3 or greater, and also provides a nice recovery for us, letting us cast the Dawn half to get all of our creatures with power 2 or less back from our graveyard and into our hand. So even if we have a couple anthems out and all of our creatures are destroyed for having power 3 or greater, we can recover as they'll have power 2 or less in the graveyard. Citywide Bust destroys all creatures with toughness 4 or greater. That's almost always going to include our commander, since his toughness is based on our devotion, but Daxos isn't as integral to our plan as the commander is in other decks. Sometimes you just need to get rid of a specific problem on the field. Swords to Plowshares exiles a creature at instant speed and at the cost of 1 mana, but gives its controller life equal to its power. Disenchant destroys any artifact or enchantment. Return to Dust exiles any artifact or enchantment, and if we cast Return to Dust on our main phase, we exile two of those instead. Generous Gift destroys any permanent and leaves a 3-3 elephant in its place. Oblation shuffles any permanent into its owner's library, and in exchange, they draw two cards. Our mana base kicks off with Castle Ardenvale. Most likely, it enters untapped for us, as we'll have plenty of other planes out. It taps for white, or we can pay two and double white and tap it to make a 1-1 white human. Memorial to Glory comes in tapped and taps for white, or we can pay three and a white, tap and sack it to create two 1-1 white soldier creature tokens. Arch of Orozca has Ascend, meaning that if we have 10 or more permanents, we have the city's blessing for the game. In a token build, that's extremely easy to get to. It taps for colorless, or if we have the city's blessing, we can pay 5 and tap it to draw a card. Seagate Wreckage taps for colorless, or we can pay 2 and a colorless and tap it to draw a card, so long as we have no cards in hand. Next up, there's Secluded Step, Drifting Meadow, and Desert of the True, all of which produce white or can be cycled away if we need another card more than the land. Kibira Crossroads gives us two life when it enters tapped, and it produces white. Shefet Dunes taps for either colorless or for white at the cost of one life, or at sorcery speed we can pay two and double white, tap, and sack a desert to give all of our creatures plus one plus one until end of turn. Remote Farm enters tapped with two depletion counters on it, and we can tap and remove one of these counters to produce two white. We sacrifice this when the counters are gone, which means that we can get this back with Sun Titan if need be. Ruins of Trocare enters tapped and taps for white. It can be tapped and sacked for two white instead if we need the additional mana. The rest of the mana base concludes with 25 planes. The total cost for this deck came up to $46.51. These prices are powered by TCG Player, not a sponsor, using optimized pricing. The total does include shipping and allows for cards of any condition and should more accurately reflect the actual cost of the deck. Again, because we're now including shipping costs and not always the lowest possible price for each card, we're bumping the budget on our decks up to $50. Thank you for watching, and if you like what we're doing here, subscribe or share this video with a friend, or leave a comment telling us what we missed, what you'd like to see in the future, or what you think of these changes. See you again next video.